Anthony. Today, I want to talk to you about a subject um, on which um, almost um, everybody um, would um, try to be able to understand, yet uh, to get used to uh, the topic at hand. It's called, There is Nothing Against Female Pastors. Absolutely nothing. When I was growing up, and let me explain this to you um, when the message is over. There is perhaps no more hotly debated issue in the church today than the issue itself about women serving as pastors and preachers. As a result, it's important to not see this issue as far as males versus females are concerned. There are females out there who believe females cannot serve as pastors and that the Bible places restrictions and or limitations or boundaries on the ministry of females. And there are males who believe females can serve as preachers and that there are absolutely no limitations or boundaries about females in the ministry itself. In other words, this isn't about chauvinism or discrimination. And um, this, this um, um, thing has nothing to do with uh, people who are against female ministers. It's about a biblical interpretation. And here's why. If you have your Bible or Bible app, please, I want you to mark 1 Timothy 2 verses 11 through 12. And the word of God proclaims, and listen to this, a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be silent. Now, in the church, God assigns different roles to both males and females. This is the result of the way mankind was created and the way in which sin entered the world. Mark 1 Timothy 2 verses 13 through 14. Now, God, through the Apostle Paul, limits females from serving in roles of teaching and or having a spiritual authority over males. This precludes females from serving as pastors over males. That obviously includes preaching towards each other, teaching each other publicly and exercising spiritual authority over each other. You know what I mean? Now, there are, a, there are the many objectives to this view of females in pastoral ministry. The more common one is that Paul limits females from teaching because back in the first century, females were typically uneducated. However, though, 1 Timothy 2 verses 11 through 14 found nowhere that is mentioned about educational status. If education were a qualification for the ministry, then the majority of Jesus' disciples would have not would be absolutely disqualified. Now, a second common if you common objection, if you will, is that Paul only limited the females of Ephesus from teaching males. First Timothy was written to Timothy, the pastor of the church in Ephesus. Ephesus was known to their temple to Artemis and females and female were the authorities in that branch of paganism. Therefore, the theory goes, Paul was the only reacting against the woman-led 
customs of the Ephesian idolaters and the church needed to be different. However, though, the book of First Timothy nowhere mentions Artidius, nor does Paul mention the standard practice of Artidius worshipers as the reason for the limitations that is found in 1 Timothy 2 verses 11 through 12. Now, the third objection I want to share with you is that Paul only referring to husbands and wives, not just males and females in public. The Greek words for woman and man in 1 Timothy 2 uh, in 1 Timothy 2 could refer to husbands and wives. However, the basic meaning of the, of the phrase is broader than that. Furthermore, the same Greek words or phrases are used in verses 8 through 10. Are only husbands to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger and disputing? Verse 8. Are only wives to dress mod modestly, having good deeds, and worship God? Verses 9 through 10. Absolutely not. Verses 8 through 10 clearly refer to all males and females, not just husbands and wives. There is nothing in the context that would indicate a narrowing to husbands and wives in verses 11 through 14. Yet another objection to this interpretation of females in pastoral ministry is in relation to females who held positions of leadership in the Bible, especially Miriam, Deborah, and Hudal in the Old Testament. It is true that these females were chosen by God for special service to him and that they stand as models of um, of the three things, get this, faith, courage, and yes, leadership. However, the authority of women in the Old Testament is not relevant to the issue of pastors in the church. The New Testament epistles present a new paradigm for God's people. I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ, and that paradigm involves an authority structure unique to the church, not for the nation of Israel or any other Old Testament entry, so to speak. Similar arguments are made using Priscilla and Phoebe in the New Testament. In Acts 18, Priscilla and Aquila are presented as faithful ministers for Christ. In verse 18, Priscilla's name is mentioned first, suggesting to some that she was more popular in ministry than her husband. The detail of whose name comes first is absolutely inconsequential. Because in verses 2 and 26, the order is reversed from that, from that of verse 18. The question is, did Priscilla and her husband teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Apollos? The answer is yes. In their home, in Acts 18, 26, they explained to them, they explained to him the way of God more adequately. Does the Bible ever say that Priscilla pastored a church or taught publicly or became the spiritual leader of a congregation of saints? Absolutely not. The answer is no. As far as we know, and Priscilla, and this is the biblical Priscilla, not my friend in that sort of sense, was not involved in ministry activity in contradiction to 1 Timothy 2, 
11.14. Now, in Romans 16.1, Phoebe is called a deacon or servant in the church and is highly commended by Paul. But as with Priscilla, there is nothing in scripture to indicate that Phoebe was a pastor or a teacher of men in the church. Able to teach is given as a qualification for elders, but not for deacons. Please mark 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 13, Titus 1 verses 6 through 19. The structure of 1 Timothy 2, 11, 14 makes the reason why females cannot be pastors or that um, theme that the entire congregation may be or the church may be against female pastors um, had made itself perfectly clear. Verse 13 begins with four, giving the cause of Paul's statement in verses 11 through 12. Now, why should females not teach or have authority over males? I can give you the answer to this. Because Adam was created first, then Eve, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the female who was deceived, verses 13 to 14. God created Adam first and then created Eve to become a helper for Adam. The order of creation has universal application in the family. Ephesians 5, 22, verses 33, and in the church. The fact that Eve was deceived is also given in 1 Timothy 2, 14 as a reason for females not serving as pastors, um, obviously, or um, if um, the church is against female pastors um, having spiritual authority over males this does not necessarily mean that females are gullible or that they are more easily deceived than males if each and every one of these females are more easily deceived why would they be allowed to teach children who are easily deceived amongst other females were supposedly more easily deceived. The text simply says that females are not to teach males or have spiritual authority over males because Eve was deceived. That is exactly what I have said to you more than twice. God has chosen to give males the primary teaching authority in the church. There are two more I'm going to deal with, and then I'm going to give you a commentary about it. Many females excel in gifts of hospitality, mercy, teaching, evangelism, and helping serving. Much of the ministry of the local church also depends on females. Females in the church are not limited from praying, from public playing or prophesying. And as in addition, they are not against praying over those people, healing the sick and raising from the dead. First Corinthians 11, five, only from having spiritual teaching authority over males. The Bible nowhere limits women or to be against women, females, from exercising the gifts of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 12. Females, just as much as males, uh, are called to be ministered to others to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, verses 23. And to proclaim the gospel to the lost. Matthew 28, 18, 20. Acts 1, 8. And 1 Peter 3, 15. And finally, to conclude it all here, God has ordained that only males are to serve in the positions of spiritual teaching authority in the church. 
This isn't because males are necessarily better teachers or because females are inferior or less intelligent. That is simply not the case. It is simply the way God designed the church to function. Males are to set the example in spiritual leadership in their lives and through their own words or phrases. While male, while females are to take the, the lesser authoritative role. In other words, females are encouraged to teach other females, which is nothing against the entire church whatsoever, as well as the congregation itself. The Bible also does not restrict or is not against other females from teaching children. The only activity females are restricted from or limited to is teaching or having spiritual authority over males. This precludes females from serving as pastors to males. This does not make women become lesser important. In other words, they, the entire um, church and members of the congregation have nothing against females whatsoever by any means. But other than that, just give them a ministry focus more in agreement with God's plan and his gifting of them. Now, we do believe it's important for females uh, to uh, go out there and continue to support the ministries with either their boyfriends or their own or their fiancés or their own husbands in such a radical way um, the people's lives have been saved um, whether the christians are familiar or not and basically in order for for the for female ministers to sought out to become the best ministers, they would basically have to uh, step up, take classes, um, be able to have a fresh eye. Not only that, to uh, preach the word of God every place they go. And if that weren't enough, the church has nothing against females whatsoever. And, it, and no, it is not necessarily a new thing that most female ministers have been preaching the word of God for quite some time. Most female ministers have been preaching the word of God longer than what you might think. Now, when I, now about my experience, I watched Marilyn Hickey for so many years and you know what? She got people, though she started ministry late, but she got people to become partners, prayer partners with them. Not only that, she even has her own daughter to, to join in her ministry together. And, to, and today, Marilyn is opening the doors to every other minister who can um, become um, the best of the best and even an amazing spirit. A wonderful lady and I owe it all to Marilyn who in her long life became very devoted a very loving lady and if that weren't enough I also watch Pastor Kim Jones um, each week on Real Talk Kim Mondays and Tuesdays and on Sundays um, believe it or not every time I get to watch her you know what? She is all open book. She, in other words, uh, is sort of the cool Christian um, who urges people to not just sit around and do nothing, but to just stand up, join her own inner circle, and at the same time, be able to um, get healed when it takes um time to do it and she also gets people to try to uh, basically understand what it's like in order to uh, come clean with the word of God that's all there is to it 
Well, I thank you very much for watching. Be blessed, take care, and good night.